Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing something a little different today. This is just essentially a test video to see if I can do videos this way instead of the way that I have been doing them for a really long time. So if you've been watching me for a while, you'd know that I do voiceovers for all my videos. Not my unboxings though, and I haven't had a problem with the audio on those. So I thought maybe I could start filming and speaking at the same time, just so that it saves me that step of doing a voiceover in editing. I find I speak better and clearer as I'm going rather than with scripted things. That end, I feel like half the ideas I wanna share with you while I'm crafting get lost and I don't put them in the script for the final video later. Unfortunately today, it has just started raining. As soon as I've been able to start recording, which is a bit of a pain, we do have like a color bond roof, so the rain here is particularly loud. I have tried to make sure the rest of the house is as quiet as possible though, so if we can ignore that for today, that'll be good. So now I will show you the card that I am making today. I don't actually have the card finished, which is a little bit funny because usually by this point of the voiceover I've done the card and I can show it to you, but hope it looks good. <laughs> I'm sure it will by the time we're finished. Okay, now this step is the one that I always wish I could speak through when I'm doing my cards in the moment rather than put it in the voiceover later because sometimes this changes and I feel like I can't really get across my ideas because that moment is lost. So I'm going to show you what I plan on using for today's card. So as always, I'm going with one of these banners, which <laughs> probably means that I will be embossing at some point, and we all know how I feel about embossing. It looks fantastic, but it's my least favorite step of the cards. In here, I've got a bunch of different sized hearts, and my thoughts there is that I'm making kind of a Valentine's Day card, kind of just a cute card, and the hearts would look really cute in it. This as well, I thought the little heart balloon would look really cute. Now we're going back a little while. This is one of my older sets and the reason I'm using this one, it is kind of Valentine's Day themed, but I really love this little stamp here that it can turn all of these into like little characters, but I'm not using it on any of these today. I'm going to be using it on a pop tart and I really want to use the toaster. I don't know if I will use any of these sentiments. I think I will go with my own sentiment. Here I have an alphabet. It's the Smitty's ABCs. It is an older one. I think this one, might be the one I used today. I put a couple of different alphabets, but I'm hoping this one looks good. This will uh, make up the rest of my sentiment that isn't the die cut part. And then of course, I've got my favorite alphabet die set. I honestly can't even remember what this one's called now. I actually really need to label this plastic sleeve along with a whole bunch of other ones at the moment, but you have probably seen this one in about a million of my videos so far. For the background today, I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn Brick Stencil. This is one of my favorites. It just makes the cutest backgrounds. The colours I'm using today, I think I might go with pastels, and so my background will be made of these three colours. So we've got fresh lavender, mermaid, and celery stick. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so what I'm starting with here is a white piece of cardstock that I have cut with my largest stitched rectangle. That is probably my most used die, other than that alphabet set, because I seem to use that for almost all of my backgrounds. And so what I'm going to do here is lay my brick stencil over the top. I'm probably going to hold it down with just a little bit of washi tape so that it doesn't move. And then I'm going to get started with this background. Okay, now that that is held in place, I'm going to get started. Now I'm not pushing very hard with these today. I don't want the background to be, I guess, too much of a solid color. If I'm going for a pastel look, I don't want to overdo it with this ink. So I'm not going to keep going back for more. I'm only going to use this little bit and spread it, I guess, just as far as it'll go. I don't find Lawn Fawn inks to be too bad at blending, but I'm not going to, I guess, force them <laughs> to blend together too much. But I will overlap the edges just a little bit. Now the reason I'm going to stop here with the blue and use so much purple is because I am going to probably have another piece of cardstock down here for like a kitchen bench. And while I probably don't have to go all the way down to the bottom with the purple because it will be covered up, I will just for the sake of it looking good in the video. Okay, that did move a little bit there, but I don't think we were going to have any problems. So now we can take this one off the top and have a look at our cute background. I love that. It's very, very pretty. But now, of course, I'm going to add some sparkles over the top. 
Here is my Starry watercolor set. It is my favorite. I'm actually not a very big fan of gold in general, but these are just so beautiful and sparkly. You will see though that I have used the white gold probably more than the others, just because it does go with any color. Whereas I feel like, you know, the golds do have different bases like the blues and reds, but I don't know, I just find silver goes with, oh sorry, white gold goes with everything. And while that dries, I'm going to go wash my stencil. Now dry, and that is what it looks like. So for the bench top, I'm going with this piece of white cardstock that is the Lawn Fawn White Wood Grain cardstock. I'm going to colour it up just a little bit with some Pizza Crust ink. I do love it when it's white, but I feel like I, I just make so many white cards, and I do want to just add a little bit of colour to it and maybe bring out that lovely texture in the wood grain. So what I'm going to do now is just stamp out all my images ready for colouring. Okay, so time for colouring. I don't have a lot of, I mean I've got a lot of markers but not a lot of colour variation in this. Uh, I am going to do a strawberry pop tart and a chocolate pop tart and colour in that toaster and then just decide if I need to add any more colour to the background or anything else with some maybe some other images or die cuts or something. So yeah, we'll get this done now. Something that I always try to do in my videos, but almost immediately forget every time, uh, is to have the lid there so that you can see what marker I'm using. Now I am going to probably speed up the video for this part and just keep my talking at a normal speed, obviously, so I don't sound strange. But maybe the sounds <laughs> won't line up with the video perfectly. I desperately need to re-ink this marker again. I just don't feel like I have a lot of luck with re-inking them. I do buy the inks, I, you know, pull out the nib, put the ink in, but they either just don't last or maybe I'm not connecting them properly. Maybe my pens are just like too old to bother doing this step anymore. I'm really not sure. There we go. I'm not going to use that everywhere. And I'm just going to blend these together. I would love to know in the comments, do you like Pop-Tarts? And if so, what is your favorite flavor? rearranging myself on the chair because I'm short. <laughs> I need a better view of what's going on. I think these ones might do well for the outside. So let's give that a go. These are new to my collection. I really wanted more browns, mostly for skin tones, but for bits and pieces like this too. So while I'm here and a little distracted by this color, um, Thought I'd talk a little bit about why I'm trying to change up my videos a little bit. So you probably noticed last year I probably had uh, the least amount of videos put up ever. Uh, I was very busy with a few major projects that I was working on and uh, just the videos. I love doing them, don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love doing this, but it is just really tricky. My laptop is getting old, it's like seven years old now. iMovie uh, makes it scream and protest and it just really doesn't like me using that program for very long and doing the voiceovers is just another job that I have had to do and I always have to do it late at night <laughs> so that no one in the house is awake and I don't get interrupted and it was just getting exhausting really and I don't know about you but I like card making to be fun <laughs> I don't like it to feel like a job so I think that's where I was losing a lot of the love for it was it was just feeling like so much work I wasn't finding it as relaxing as I used to at the beginning when I was sharing, you know, at least a card a week. That and I was just getting busy with so many other things. So I'm hoping that if I get to talk to you through the video, rather than having to go back later and do a perfectly worded script, that maybe these videos will just come across like a little bit more genuine and fun because that's how I want them to feel. I mean, anyway, I'd like your opinions on it by the end of the video if you prefer it like this or if you'd like me to go back to my simply scripted and saying the same thing as I do in every other video. Here we go. Oh, they're so cute. I do love these pop tarts. I will decorate them with some other things in a minute. I do just have to, I think, find, there's a Christmas stamp set I want to find that has the icing for the cookies that I will probably put on that. And I'll probably put sprinkles on this one because I just love sprinkles. I 
I do that like a hundred times <laughs> per video. I think I actually edit that out most of the time that I pulled the cap off the wrong way. So silly. You know when you've got like a specific stamp somewhere in your stash and you know it's there and you can see it clearly in your head but you can't find the stamp set? Yeah, I just had that problem. This this is the one I need. This little squiggle. That's what I want on the pop tart. So like always, I remembered to grab my anti-static powder. Forgot to use it. So I do have just a few little flecks hanging around that I can hopefully get off before I melt that powder. Okay, so for my strawberry pop tart, I have a few colors I'm going to stamp on with this little sprinkle stamp, but I'm only gonna do one sprinkle at a time, which I know is a bit, a bit silly, a bit over the top, but have a look I'm going for, and I just wanna get it right. I don't want to give him like cranky eyebrows, so I can't really do the sprinkles. <laughs> I'll just do two of each color for now, and then I will just fill in the gaps with whatever looks best. Oh, nearly lost a finger. I've done that a couple of times. Have you ever done that? Getting your <laughs> fingers pinched between those magnets? I think, yeah, it has literally pinched skin off. They're so intense. But I did see this trick to add like washi tape to them so that you can pull them apart easy once they do that, because they do like to cling together quite tight. It won't save <laughs> your skin, but at least it saves time trying to pry them apart. Oh, <laughs> I'm just so in love with that, it's so cute. Oh, adorable. I will just add some cheeks to these guys with my Copic marker as well, because I forgot to do that but they are looking very, very cute. Okay, now it's time for white highlights. Today I'm using the size one and the 0.8. These are my favorites. I mean, I do love the little 05 as well for the tiny little images, but I don't have any of them to worry about today. I do tend to just need to run it a little bit to get it going. And then I just add lines wherever I think light would hit it. Um, and then some little dots in the shadowy area. I guess it just kind of ties things together. There's no real need for it. It's just a, a preference. I just like the way it looks. Now I'm going to fussy cut these out, except for the little arms and legs. I will use the die for that. It is far easier and it is the reason I bought that die set for the matching stamp set um, because it just, that's too tricky to cut out on its own. It's so much easier using that one. So I'll have all of these cut out and then we can start arranging our scene. Now that they're all cut out, I am very quickly going to assemble them with some glue so that they're ready to play around with on my background so we can work out where we're gonna stick them. After a whole load of very tedious arranging, I think I'm happy with where these letters are going. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed what I just did there, but it was like a tiny piece of fluff stuck to that ink and I tried to blow it away uh, but it just blew all the letters away <laughs> instead so that's what crafting with me is like I will leave that in there because that's just one of the many silly things that that I do that I would probably normally edit out there we go so with all these letters in place now I am just going to pick them up one at a time and add some glue on the back and stick them into place Ok, 
Okay, now that I've given them a second to dry, I'm just going to add some white highlights to these letters. Now before I go adding my little pop tarts with some dimension on the back, I am going to turn my card front over and add some double sided tape. And there we have it. This little card is complete. I love it. I think it turned out so cute. I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. Please don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to come back and see more. I'd also love to know what you think of me doing the voiceovers this way. Do you think it works better? I'll give it a couple more goes before I decide what I want to do. I'll leave you with some photos of the finished card. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.